Good morning. The uh, sun was hidden behind those mountains and it just cracked up beyond that mountain ridge and uh, starting to spread a little bit more warmth. Despite going to bed around 1 a.m. or quarter two last night, I uh, managed to drag my ass out of bed at 6 a.m., which isn't bad considering I got a lot of exercise yesterday. So I'm not gonna get a super early jump on the day. However, I'm gonna get on the water or on the rocks, I should say, in the water. I don't know, I'm not really on water. I'm more just sitting on rocks with a little water running in between the canoe and the rocks. Yeah, so the drag will start. I'm halfway there, which is pretty discouraging. I'm gonna to try to get out of camp relatively early, and today, you know, I don't even know if I'm gonna keep a fish today. I'm just gonna uh, just push, 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 and, and do my very best to make it. Even if I don't make it to like 12.30, it's still light out here at 12.30. I think that's probably gonna be the plan today. This is not one of the more enjoyable things that I do out here. Finding stuff in the food barrel. The barrel and harness is made by Recreational Barrel Works and those uh, little bags are as well. <clears throat> it just makes life a lot easier. Jim Baird eats porridge, riveting scene. Well, it turned out to be a pretty good campsite. Nice space here for the fire, easy enough, close to get water, flat spot for the tent. A little spread out where I had to have my fire in a tent or a little too far. You have to do a bit of a bushwhack to get from one spot to the other, but uh, I liked it. And here's what the rest of my breakfast looks like. Fruit source bar, dried fruit, which in this case is Thai honey mango, delicious. And last but not least, some pre-cooked bacon. What I do as I'm going through my food barrel in the morning, I set my lunch aside and I put in my day bag. We're gonna have uh, peanut butter and jam tortillas, a little trail mix, some uh, cliff bars, a little beef jerky. I'm gonna tuck my fishing rod away a little more effectively. The river's getting fast and there's uh, tight turns and uh, some sweepers and stuff and I don't wanna break my rod, you know, getting it hung up on uh, some branches as I go past. So I just uh, do that. I wrap the line around the handle after breaking it down, putting one piece through the guide and just give it a tighten. Good way to stow your rod away.
on the water. Day three. What does it have in store? Well, it looks like we're gonna get right into the dragging. Maybe 50 meters from my campsite, another shallow swift, so. <sighs> kind of takes away the saying, it feels good to get back on the water though, for sure. Feels good to get back, stumbling along the rocks like, like an idiot, concerned and scared. Goodness, I think I'm gonna make it down this one, ladies and gents. I'm trying to keep with the deepest channel here. I did it! I made it down. Michael row the boat ashore. Hallelujah. Michael row the boat ashore. Oh, which way to go here? Oh, sh I'm hooped. <sighs> hop, the hop works. Get you off bottom. Yeah, oh my God. I've made it an enormous distance without having to walk. This feels good. Oh, now this one, I'm definitely hooped though. I would say very high probability. It's hard to tell sometimes because the water's really clear so it can look shallower than it is. I'm doing it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. These look like some good uh, little fishing pockets actually. Whoa, this is beautiful though. Oh my God, a huge grayling. Oh my goodness. That was bigger than anything I've caught so far. Just like freaking tank probably probably two pounds for sure water's definitely gotten colder some of those tributaries are cold oh this is so beautiful wow so far the day has been amazing <sighs> that is just in, what you call inspiring country right there a beaver dam and a tributary I've learned to not get overly optimistic on this stretch, but I'm just gonna say, so far it's been the most easily navigable stretch I've been on yet. And I'm wondering if the water has actually gone up a little bit, not that we've had any rain, but just that uh, the hot day yesterday, very hot weather, potentially melted some more of the snow up in the mountains and drained it into the river, I don't know. Oh man, of course, as soon as I say it, I round the corner and there's an endless drag. Ooh. We have what looks like a rapid here, but that's a sweeper. I do not want to crash into that down tree in the river. That would spell disaster. probably bump and grind down this one but uh it would just trash my boat too much i'm gonna line it 
Oh man, should have made it to here. It's a sick campsite. Definitely an emerald tinge to it. I can paddle though. Get more interesting. Another sweeper here. River's starting to get pushier. I have to be a little care more careful or I get pinned or, or just uh, smash. Maybe flip, current fills up the boat, running sideways into boulders. Good time, guys. up like this, not going to be too, too long. Water is just emerald. Man, this is beautiful. So cool coming through here right now. I'm just uh, in a side channel. The creek splits around a huge island and it looks like I definitely picked the right channel. Well, I picked the left channel, but it's the right one. Not the right one, but the right one. That's what you call some serious dad energy. <laughs> I got that in one of my comments. You are throwing off some serious dad energy. 
one time uh, I went to this like shoe store, this big shoe store. The lady who worked there pointed me in the direction of the shoes and they're all these like a f fancy like Italian loafers and stuff. And I, I kind of explained, oh, I want something more simpler or more something. And she's like, oh, what you want is dad shoes. And I'm like thinking, no, I don't want dad shoes. And then she brought me to the dad shoe section. And I'm like, oh my God, this is exactly what I was looking for. Wow, another big, beautiful gravel bar. Things are looking up. At this point, I'm not afraid of the creek drying up. I'm afraid of the creek pushing me into um, a sweeper. I suppose it's a good problem to have. I think I should make it today if it keeps up like this, which is great news. Watch as the world falls away. Here we are flying At sunrise the moon starts to wane Living and dying And the oceans echo Out their deep refrain And the river answers I'll make you whole again And breaks apart the night But the sparks will burn out Long before they light Oh, oh this is beautiful It's open right up couple more tributaries we still got this absolutely crystal clear water it's gotten even clearer and incredible scenery so today I think it's safe to say so far is uh, working out a lot better than I thought it was going to well I don't want to get uh, too too ahead of myself because it could change it could get shallower and I still have about 10 kilometers to go so maybe about eight but it's really hard to judge because the river just winds and curves back and forth and back and forth. Ooh, that looks pretty sketchy. And that is what I was talking about. No room to go on the other side. There's a really sketchy sweeper, no way past that one. Very intimate, bends and twists, emerald clear water, some of the most beautiful water I've ever seen. Just, just made it. Whew. I should not have taken the time to pull up my GoPro. That's why that happened. I came around a corner and saw a steep drop with ripping current rocks. And I see just a down tree across the river. The top broken off of it. So essentially it's just a log blocking the whole river with ripping current. And of course I thought this was, you know, some exciting video footage for all of you to see so I took the time to bust out my other GoPro as I'm coming down river and that almost did me in because I careened 
nearly sideways into this thing. If you got uh, stuck on that, it would just be really, really bad. You'd, you'd pin, you'd get injured, your canoe would flip, potentially pinned against it, like total nightmare. Hopefully no more surprise sweepers. Those are sketchy and dangerous. A sweeper or a strainer is when uh, a downed tree is in the river. If you get stuck in it, if it has branches, you can get trapped in it and drown. That could cause some serious problems. These rivers and creeks are always changing, so it's hard to tell on the map too. The map was taken from aerial surveys probably in the 70s. There were no real maps of the north until the 70s, I believe. You're just going off old explorer's notes and these kinds of things is the best that anyone had. Then you don't know what water level the aerial photos were taken at too. So there's all kinds of islands that might have shifted. Side slaws that weren't there that now are or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, with this current is always at work, eroding away the banks and creating new passages. Almost feels like uh, I'm in a river now. This is a really cool section. We're just budding right up against the foot of a mountain here as the creek is taking a sharp right turn. We have some um, interesting stuff to contend with up here. Oh, this is sketchy. Sweeper, tight turn, two boulders. Oh man, this looks bouldery class one here. sort of came up on me rounded a corner I was looking at the mountain and all of a sudden whoa boulder boulder boulder
Well, it is two in the afternoon and I have five more kilometers to go here on Elliott Creek till I reach the Heart River. So that means I'm gonna make it uh, largely because the conditions are way different. Uh, the river's deeper. I can run some of the swifts as opposed to, I didn't just walk. Yesterday, I pretty much walked 10K. So yeah, I think I'm gonna make it, which means probably um, if I see a good fishing spot, I might take a few casts and see if I can get a grayling or a white fish. Um, but still a ways to go. I imagine probably the fishing is half decent at the mouth too, where Elliott Creek meets the Heart River. Anyways, good news, good news. Okay, so we are right here. And we're getting to here today. Yeah, I think I'm gonna camp at the uh, mouth of Elliott Creek and uh, the Heart River. Well, it appears we have some fun yet. I just came into uh, a braided stretch of the creek here, and I don't know, I took the only braid that looked like it wasn't just loaded with sweepers and danger. And sure enough, I ran out of water, and uh, the only way down is blocked. So I'm gonna bust out the saw and line the canoe down. Hopefully uh, not too much more like this, but yeah, unexpected, things were going pretty smoothly. Hopefully we don't have uh, too much more of that kind of stuff to contend with. That was the biggest, uh, it's short, but that was the most substantial drag. Like I had to drag the canoe over some rocks there at the very end. But that uh, just bit into my time pretty significantly. Beautiful clear water pool here. A couple of graylings swimming in it. It's almost a surreal experience. As I'm wading along these channels in this braided section of creek, I'm looking down at this crazy emerald clear water and I can just see chunky Arctic grayling swimming in the current, waiting for food to come down river and it's really, really awesome. I don't know what it is, but something about it just seems almost surreal. Weepers. Another couple around the corner. This is the kind of thing you could peel around a corner and it could pop out of nowhere. And a swift current, you could be in a lot of trouble. Shouldn't be too, too much further now. I'm gonna make it today. Told myself I was gonna make it today and I think all in, it's probably been easier than I anticipated. Although there has been more dangerous things, uh, obstacles than the previous day. It wasn't so discouraging with no water.
I'm stuck. <laughs> well, that was interesting. Heart River, I made it! Yes! Oh, it looks so beautiful. One last little rapid, maybe I can make it down here. Looks like there's a decent place to camp on the left there. That is it, I did it! I was starting to think I was never gonna do it. on the Heart River. Definitely it's not as clear as uh, Elliott Creek. It almost has like an emerald color with silt in it. And I am gonna camp right here, don't mind if I do. That was another long day. It's about 7.30. Uh, got on the water at 9.30. So long haul for me on Elliott Creek. I imagine it would be a lot easier for some people uh, when the water level's higher you know and um, or somebody who's you know not as heavy as a person as me um, I'm sure I beat the heck out of the bottom of this canoe but I mean that's what these expedition grade canoes can handle between all the endless wading and dragging and the anxiety about am I gonna make it is this river gonna dry up to then finding out that hey it's not so bad feeling a little elated getting to paddle some rapids and tricky turns to all of a sudden then getting stuck in shallow water again and having to drag and you know manage my way through braided river with sweepers and all kinds of sketchy stuff like that to uh, getting it done and this is what I set out to do today to get it done and I got it done earlier than I thought I was going to do it so I'm pretty happy about that. Now I have the Heart River in front of me are some serious challenges. I'm gonna have raging rapids, even class three plus rapids, canyons, and uh, on the heart itself, and even more to come after that. So, but anyways, I'm going to, uh, yeah, see if I can catch a fish and uh, hopefully get to bed a little early, have a great night's sleep, and just enjoy this campsite in a beautiful evening. So, awesome. I am feeling tired. Sun's just beating down too. But uh, I am going to show you an advanced bushcrafting technique. Glacier fresh tasting kokanee. I forgot about these. This is all the booze I brought out here, three beer. But I figure it's a good celebratory time to have one or three. I put the beers in. Now I'm gonna go place it in the water. Now by the time I have the tent set up and the fire going, I'm gonna have some ice cold beers, yeah!
just catching grayling every cast here. Vacuum sealed cheese lasts for almost three weeks. I just freeze it after I vacuum seal it and then pop it in my food barrel right before I leave. We're making tortilla pizzas. Tortillas keep a very long time when you're in the bush. And on top of that, they're thin. So when you're heating them up on a frying pan or however you heat them up, the heat travels through them and melts the cheese before the bread part burns. So I think, in my opinion, they're better than pitas. But usually I vacuum seal my pitas and both sides are squished together, so they're extra thick. So I mean, there could be an argument there. I suggest taking the rest of the evening to think it over. What I do with my cans after I finish using them, I throw them in the fire to burn off any remaining food. Usually there's not much left. You can also just wash them out. Um, some people say don't do that because it can make a smell and attract animals. I think that's true if there's like a bunch of cans and it's like tuna or something. Um, but yeah, I just, I recommend just burning them off, crushing them down, throwing them in the bottom of your food barrel, forget about them. Don't leave the cans in the fire. You know, um, that's why they have rules in most provincial parks and national parks you can't bring them because so many idiots just leave cans around. Oh, nailed it. Next time I'm making it in the pan. <laughs> that was close. My beer! We have an ice cold beer. It tastes amazing. Crunchy bottom. The pizza sauce is what does it. I mean, let's be honest, anything with melted cheese is delicious. Next up, grayling. Well, the water in Elliott Lake was pretty warm because it's a shallow lake, but with all the mountain runoff tributaries on Elliott Creek, by the end here, the water is very cold as it is in the heart. Gentle, welcome home. Thank you, Rock. Oh man, they feel so cold. Let's see. Absolutely ice cold. Nailed it. A huge fan of that pan I have it's not a non-stick at all so it kind of busts your meat apart but still tastes good mmm look at that I just cook it whole and the bones just pull right out you really waste no meat this one's probably so good because I just caught it so it's like super fresh one thing about grayling they don't keep that well probably why there's not a big um commercial market for them. So if you catch one early on in the day, it won't be bad, but it'll be really mushy. It won't, it won't rot, but they do rot faster. So 
just the quality of the flesh, the firmness of the flesh, you kind of lose that. So this one's just right fresh. That's probably why this is the best. Mm. Easy to say, the best fish I've had in a very long time. Absolutely delicious. Thanks a lot, Thymelius Articus. <sighs> well, I am extremely exhausted. Uh, overall, it was a good day today. It worked out better than I was expecting. Uh, bugs weren't bad. Usually at, in the evening, the bugs have been bad around camp. Few, but not bad. And found a really nice campsite here. There's a, a flatter area that's kind of beautifully spread out with almost looks like cobblestone from, uh, you know, high water gravel beds. But um, I didn't bother hauling all my stuff back there. I took the spot closer to the river, which is great. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Heart River has in store tomorrow. I don't know really what's going to be going on. I think there might be some relatively relaxed paddling uh, for a while scenery should pick up so i'm hoping i can see some wildlife and uh, get into some more fishing but before too long i'll be hitting some pretty intense rapids too so i don't want to get too relaxed i want to keep kind of focused on what lays ahead and make sure if i see a rapid coming out I can jump over give it a good scout make sure it's something manageable anyways um yeah last few things here packing up and i'm gonna head off to bed really really exhausted today uh, but feel good